Hi everyone, it is Kimber, the study abroad specialist here. And in today's video, I just wanted to do a quick follow up to last week's video where I was talking about financial aid for study abroad for US students. And so within that video, I was speaking specifically about the FAFSA, which is the federal uh, student aid application that most students here in the US fill out every single year throughout their college career. And it's a way to figure out which scholarships and grants and also loans that you are eligible for specifically from the federal government. So um, this application is available every October and it's really important that most students and practically most students that I worked with and that I know, even if their parents make too much money, for example, they may be eligible for something. And so as I was saying in that video, it's always recommended that you fill it out just to make sure um, that you get any type of funding that you are qualified for because college is very expensive especially here in the United States. But whenever I'm talking to students, particularly if I'm advising them, if you are interested in getting some study abroad advising, please follow the link that is here on the screen, or you can also click in the link in the description box. But um, when I work with students specifically for, you know, figuring out about funding, because I know it's a huge question, I always get the question from students who want to come to the U.S. Specifically, they ask, you know, when they hear, because Typically, you know, especially now with TikTok and obviously Instagram has been around for so long and Facebook and all these things, uh, around the time when uh, the FAFSA application opens, they see it. And so they're, you know, they see the information, they see that, you know, oh, like, you know, give this scholarship or, you know, apply to figure out what funding you're available for in the United States. And so they're interested in knowing, are they qualified to get that? So unfortunately, the answer is no. So any type of funding that comes from the FAFSA is specifically for American students and specifically for citizens. So this is money coming from the federal government. And typically, and in most cases, the federal government should not be giving out any type of aid towards education to foreign students. Now, if there's a special grant that is related to your country, I know that there are some specific grants that are given to students to come and study. It's related to things like asylum. It's also related to specific um, different majors. So particularly with things like engineering, um, even though we have a lot of engineers in this country, there are some countries where um, if you're coming from that particular country, like there's quite a few places like India, I know there's, you know, China is on that list where there are specific grants that you can get that, you know, we as a country, our government has partnered with those countries to recruit people. And so, but those are specific grants. They're not like just, you know, kind of just random money, like a specific grant and it has a specific purpose around it. So I just wanted to kind of point that out because I know that, you know, even I've known some students who are international students who've actually gotten on the form and tried to start the form and then they kind of go through and at one point they get stopped because they have to put in their information they realize they're not eligible. So you're not eligible for the FAFSA. However, there actually is a route where you can still get some money for college here in the US. Um, it is not federal based, it's much more of a state level and a school level. That was another thing that I talked about in the video of how even for children, you know, for kids, college kids who, you know, let's say they're not eligible for federal aid, that they still need to fill it out because that is number one, going to help your state figure out how much you can get or the state that you're going to be studying in. So again, a lot of students don't just get federal aid or sometimes they don't get any federal aid, but they may get state aid from whatever state they're going to or Commonwealth. And as well, it also helps for your specific school because again, schools typically in this country have their own funding. Some have more than others, again, depending on where it is, how much endowment they have. But again, when they look at the FAFSA, they go ahead and they're able to figure out based on what you've put on there, what other types of aid you might need to be able to supplement and make up the difference. So it's very important, again, that you fill it out. The other point to that, actually, that I'm going to say is it is recommended before I get into this other uh, application that you can do as an international student, it is recommended that you go ahead and actually fill out the FAFSA if you are an international student. Now, I know it sounds like I contradicted myself, but I just wanted to put in place that 
you, you won't be getting anything. So it's not related to you actually getting anything, but if you do fill it out, it does give insight to your, um, your college and whatever state you're gonna be studying in. So for the ISFA, it is a little bit more simplified than the FAFSA. I know that you're like, what are you talking about? I know I just explained it, but here in America, you will find if you have not come here before and you're coming to study here that we love our acronym. So just get used to it. Um, before the ISFA, it's really much more simplified. So it is similar to the FAFSA in the way that it is going to be helping you to look at what type of state level funding you're uh, eligible for. So whatever state or commonwealth that you are traveling to, that will be sort of factored in when you fill out the form. And then also to your school, which is probably more important in this situation, is going to be able to look at that and determine what you're eligible for. So it's a little bit similar in that way, because that is what they do with the FAFSA. But um, specifically for international students, they're looking at it from, you know, what would you be eligible for if you came here from the school specifically, because again, all schools in the United States have different levels of funding that they provide. And as well with states, all states have different levels with funding that they provide. And so within that other video, obviously, as you probably know, I tried to explain government a little bit. Now, keeping in mind, I could probably do a four our mini series on government, but I was specifically trying to explain the difference between federal government and state government. And within that to point out, you know, our governments here, our state governments are sort of modeled after the federal government. And so there is a Department of Education within every single state or commonwealth that handles um, all of our kind of basic education from when we're little kids to when we go through high school and then also higher education at the college and university level. So they are the ones that would be also looking at the ISFA. So there's basically three things that you're gonna need to provide for the ISFA. So you are definitely going to want to reach out to your college that you are applying to or if you are a current student and again you are you know trying to re-up it you want to reach out to them but specifically if you are coming here for the first time whatever college or universities you are applying to you want to reach out to them directly two things that you want to know from them the first thing that you want to know is you know you want to touch base with them just to kind of get in touch because you want them to know who you are but the first thing you want to know is you know, what type of funding have they provided to international students? That is really important. Again, as I was saying, every college, every university is working with a different budget here in the US. It's not like a lot of colleges and universities and places like Europe where, you know, everything is sort of funded from the government and they have a certain number that they can just tell you. So you definitely want to be clear on that. So talk to them about that. Call somebody there and, you know, just talk to them, ask them, you know, they're not gonna be able to tell you specifically what it is until they see your form and they will send that information out to you. But you can at least ask them just on general, like, you know, what have, what has the average person sort of gotten as, as an international student? You definitely just wanna know that just so you have sort of a range in your mind of what you might be able to expect from them. The other question that you wanna ask from them as well, when you call, because at all risk, if you can, just take my word on this, you want to avoid having to call government agencies. I can tell you for a fact that is not something that is very pleasant. And if you're calling on an international line, you could be on the phone for three or four hours waiting. Um, government is not very efficient in this country at any point in time. So don't do it to yourself. The financial aid office should be able to help you. So what else you will want to ask them is you want to know just kind of a general range of for international students, have they been able to receive any state level or common left, commonwealth level money, you know, like any type of funding? And if so, what has that been just on average? So again, they can't tell you specifically, but they will know for students who are international what students have received and they can give you a range. Preferably, you would want to ask, you know, between let's say 2017 and current date, you don't wanna, let's say, do the past 20 years because things have changed so much. But if you can get like a 2017, 2018, 2019, and up to the current date, that would be really helpful for you because it's gonna just give you, again, an idea, sense of how much money you might be expecting, and then you will know how to fill in the gaps from there. 
So with the ISFA, there are basically three things that you're going to need to have to make sure that you successfully complete it. So the first one is actually signing the form. And I know that that sounds more simple than it should be, but you wanna make sure that you actually fill out the form and then sign it. You don't wanna miss that point. I have not actually gone through the process of this, but I would assume online you couldn't miss signing a form, but you would be surprised what people do. So you definitely want to have the signed form. Again, that will get sent directly to whatever state you're going to be going to college in, as well as your school's financial aid office. For number two, you're going to want to provide proof of income and then also proof of um, tax. So you know, you've probably heard a lot about taxes here in the U.S. It works a lot different than uh, other countries. And so you want to have proof of income for yourself. And also, too, if you are traveling with any type of dependents or let's say you're a family, maybe there's a husband or, you know, someone, your husband is coming to do his studies here and you're coming, you have a baby or something like that, whatever any type of people that you're bringing with you, you want to make sure that you have information for all of them. That is something that's going to be very important. It's something that is vetted heavily, particularly at the university level, because again, getting into, let's say you're living in student-based housing, they need to know who is living there, and what's going on. And it's even more important if you're not a citizen here. So you definitely want to have that. The third thing that you're going to need to do, which is should be really simple and quick, is you're just going to have to convert the currency. So you need to just make sure that whatever currency is your home currency, that you convert the amount of whatever your income is and whatever tax that you may have paid or whatever tax liability, please convert that um, to US dollars and just go ahead and round up to, you know, the nearest number. That's going to be the easiest. But again, as you know, the state and the schools are going through doing this, they're usually not sitting there converting. It just makes it so much easier. They will do it but it just means that it's gonna make your application take longer. So go ahead and convert it, make sure that you have that information in there so that it can make it simple and get straight to the point. And then you'll be able to find out even sooner what type of age you're eligible for. All right, so that is it for the video. I know it was a quick one. I feel like I say that every single week and then every video is like 17 minutes long, but I always feel like there's just not enough time to get it all out. But specifically with the ISFA as well as the FAFSA, you know, it can be sort of overwhelming for any student as you're sort of going through this process. First of all, it's got this crazy acronym, this crazy name. You're like, what is this? You see it on social media. And then once you see it's about, you know, maybe financial aid funding, you want to know, am I eligible? And so I definitely just wanted to break that down specifically for, in this video, the international students who, you know, you definitely matter to us as well. And even though you're not eligible for the federal aid, there is still opportunity out there um, from lots of different states and commonwealths and also your schools, your schools in particular, again, as I was saying, compared to schools in a lot of other countries, there is a lot of opportunity here in the United States to get funding from colleges and universities. So I don't want any of you out there to miss out on that. Now, are you an international student who is planning to come study here in the United States in 2022 or 2023? I wanna hear about it. Had you heard about the ISFA? Um, is this something that you would already talk to your financial aid office about? Have you already heard back about how much you're getting? I want to hear about all of that. Please leave a comment in the description box below. Please, let's talk about it. Leave a comment. Also, please share this video and please like this video. I know that if you are an international student coming here to the U.S., you probably have other friends as well that might be joining you or going to a different school here in the U.S. So definitely share it with them and get this information out there. Also subscribe to the channel. I release videos every single Friday talking everything study abroad from study abroad advice, study abroad tips, how to pack for study abroad. I love study abroad so much, did it for so many years and I'm so happy to be here giving back to you and everyone here in this audience. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.